Some scoff at my emerging sculpture, but it is a good learning tool. All those little angles and hard to reach spots give me real world practice as I learn to weld. Starting with my high school metal shop class, I was taught that you have to move a welding stick in a little circular pattern to get a decent bead. But as I started paying more attention while watching videos and seeing good welders in person, I noticed that they weren't making those little circles. I just made this bead using the little circles method, and while I was getting better at doing that, it still doesn't look right. This is the first bead I laid trying the straight method, and already I could see that it was letting me focus on things like arc length, the angle of the rod, and the speed of travel. Without having to concentrate on making those little circles, I could pay more attention to the shape and size of the puddle. I know it needs a lot of practice, but for the first try, this is looking a lot better. And here's the next three beads that I laid using the straight method. I know this needs a lot of practice, but getting rid of that little circular motion makes this a lot easier. One of the things I didn't expect just using the straight motion was that I can see better around the arc. And that makes it a lot easier to put the weld exactly where I want it. Every once in a while I'll do one of these butt weld tests just to see how strong my weld really is. This can also be a good way to check the depth of your penetration. If the weld breaks, it gives you a clear picture of your penetration. You can see here where the base metal is where the penetration stopped. Ideally, the weld will pass almost completely through the thickness. To do this test, I cut a short piece off of a longer piece of stock and then clamp it up at the end so I can weld it back on. With the end of the longer piece hanging off of the table, I can put the grounding clamp on and still have everything flat on the table for the weld. And then I weld that up, making one pass across the full length of that seam. And then we cut off the welded piece, giving myself just enough room so I can get this in the vise for the test. And then I put the piece in the vise, and make sure that I tighten the vise down real well so I can beat up on this thing. And then with my 5 pound sledgehammer, I beat on the top half of this and try and either break the weld or bend the piece over. Thankfully for this video, my weld is doing great. This is 3 16 inch thick mild steel 3 inches wide. So even with the 5 pound sledgehammer it doesn't bend very easy and that puts a lot of strain on the weld because I'm hitting it on the top half of this piece. Even after all that beating the underside of the seam hasn't opened up at all. For all of my practice with my Hobart Stickmate welder I'm staying with two types of rods. I like the Hobart rods, so I'm sticking with their models 6013 and 7014. Both are rated as easy to use, and they work pretty well in most positions. The 7014 rod is a little stronger, and it's a fast freeze rod. That just means that the puddle solidifies a little faster, and that can be handy when you're doing things like verticals later on. So, all in all, I'm doing better, I'm making progress, but there's a lot of practice ahead. I'm going to continue on with my Hobart Stickmate for a while so I can get the circular motion thing out of my head and get used to going straight. Then I can go back to the MIG or try some verticals with this welder. 